Okay, I'm gonna get back started on the uh, chicken coop here. First thing I did was change the coupling thingy, whatever this thing is called, off of the hose. And now I have this new one. No more leaky air. If you watched the last video, you may have heard the tss. Yeah, super annoying, right? Yeah, no more. Uh, I've been meaning to do that for like two years. A lot of questions came in about what the heck is that thing? And that thing there is from the old coop. That coop is from the previous owner. And I didn't want to use that coop because it's uh, super dirty. Uh, and uh, the design is kind of weird how like it slopes towards the door and stuff and uh, uh, It was kind of all overgrown and it. it was just I don't know. We'll probably burn it down in the winter now This thing right here. What is this? So here up in the sky None here right now, but oftentimes you can see eagles hawks and uh, in the nighttime, I guess you might see owls uh, and that is a deterrent for those types of birds. Uh, they can actually go right through that if they wanted to, but for whatever reason, that helps keep them out so the chickens stay safe. Our plan and our, our run, our run is going to be bigger than this one, uh, sort of. It's, it's going to be a two-tier run. But anyways, our run is going to have a roof, sort of. Like, not a roof, but like a... A wire roof whatever you would call that it's gonna be all the way around it's gonna have the the wire of whatever sort we decide to get but today I'm gonna to be putting the roof on the coop and I think I know how I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do a rafter style rather than like a truss style I'm gonna have like a ridge block that goes from end to end and then I'm gonna put my stringers on that would you call them stringers? I actually don't know what they're called, but the, the part that the sheets get laid on. I'll probably do strapping and stuff too. Uh, you can see I'm wearing a sweater. It's a little windy today, but now that I'm in the direct sun, I was just in the shade over there changing out the stuff. It's getting kind of warm. So uh, this time of year, the weather is very odd. Also want to mention real quick, ugh, coming into the coop, lots of people uh, asked why our coop is so big. So I'm at one wall here. I'm about sort of a almost eight by eight space in the main uh, housing. And then in this little space here, it's about a two by four space and then the rest would be storage. The reason is because our winters are pretty brutal sometimes. Like last year was super, super cold. So we wanted to have enough space in here that our birds could be comfortable being cooped up. That's almost a pun. Uh, all winter long without, uh, you know, getting into fights and stuff. I mean, they're birds, they'll do what they want. Uh, they will be able to go outside if they want to, but yeah, we made this so they'd be comfortable in here. So there'll be plenty of roosting areas. It'll be uh, lots of space down here. They can go out the whole thing there if they want and uh, whatever whatever I don't know I'm not chicken so I don't know what chickens want exactly but uh, we care about the comfort of the birds we don't want them to be uh, getting all like cramped up and stuff and uh, another question was how are we going to keep it clean well we're actually going to have walls like that are like finished out of plywood and then we're going to paint them with like a, a glossy paint and uh, Ashley, you should see the, the temporary coop we have right now. She cleans it every week. So yeah, uh, we'll have like the litter. We're not gonna do the the litter. What is it called? Deep, deep litter? Is that when it's, they keep stacking it up? Yeah. Okay, we're not gonna do the deep litter method. Apparently that does help with warmth, but we have some other ideas for warmth. We are insulating uh, and then we do know about the the need for lots of ventilation with chickens. Uh, chickens do give off a lot of heat, and they get off give off a lot of a lot of shit. So we're going to uh, we're going to yeah. We have thought of all that. Ashley has researched this pretty extensively. She is a very smart girl, and uh, for whatever reason, when she's passionate about something, she will research the crap out of it. And uh, she even. Uh, went to, as far as to print off a university module 
uh, educational module <laughs> and study that, which is pretty intense. I thought that was hilariously cute. So, yeah, we, we've uh, we've looked into it uh, a fair bit. We do appreciate your guys' tips and, uh, and advice because uh, we don't know everything and we're not going to pretend that we know everything. Anyways, now. I'm gonna put a roof up on this, or at least I'm gonna start trying. It's a pretty tall roof, it's over eight feet. I wanted it to be really tall, and it's gonna be a, a steep pitch. It's gonna be a very tall thing. It's just, I want it to look cool. I want it to be like, when you come out here, you're like, damn, what is that? Is that a little tiny church? What is, it? you know, like those little mini churches you see around? I want it to be just some super cool, uh, and look cool, like kind of gingerbread house, you know, Hansel and Gretel style but without the candy. Wait, was that the one with the candy? Yeah, without the candy. I don't know, you know when you see, we have a, a neighbor who has a gingerbread house down there, or has the gingerbreading. You know what I'm saying, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start working now. Okay, now first, I'm gonna put the cross bracing on, which means I'm also gonna be putting on two new stilts as well. And it would have been easier had I done the stilts uh, before I put in all the, the under cap and everything like that, but it doesn't matter. I, I wanted to purposely leave it so that I can make it look aesthetically nice on that side. This side, I should have just put one in there right away, but I just didn't think about it. Right here, we're worrying about the cross bracing. So how I'm gonna get this, because they're too long, and I want them to be touching the stilts, and the stilts are inset quite a bit, I want to uh, hold this up. If I wasn't filming, I would just do this with both my hands. So the, it being screwed in, just pretend that I'm just holding it. You wouldn't have to do this. So to get your scribes where you want them to be, you basically put the end of your uh, two by four at the end of your stilt. And you can scribe that line, which I already had done. And then I know that I gotta cut that side off. Over here, where in theory I'd just be holding it, I took a square like this and held it against the stilt like this. And that's how I knew where the uh, two by four is supposed to meet the OSB. I could also measure, but this is just much quicker. And then from there, I know where to hold the two by four. In this case, I just screwed it. And then I can take my pencil and then scribe that line. And then I know where I'm supposed to cut the, the, the two sides. I really hope that made sense. And then, you can do the same thing uh, on the other side. Uh, you could probably twin this and then switch it around. Let me demonstrate. Okay, so I cut two of them that are exactly the same. So first I cut the one that I had scribed out. Then I had put it on the other side just to make sure that it would work because these two stilts are not exactly the same size. So now I'm going to throw them on there just to show you what they look with one on one side and one on the other side. Okay, so that's what we have. One on the back side, one on the front side. So then when we do the two sides here, we have to take an account that we need to coordinate them. So the stringer from here or the brace from here going down to there will be on this side. And then uh, the one coming from here to the top of that stilt over there is gonna be on this side. And that's the way everything will fit into each other. And then uh, of course, we'll do the same thing here, except for uh, vice versa, right? And then in the front there, we will do something else. Now, these stilts here are close to the same size, and that's why I could make these two cross braces the same. I could pattern them. But these ones and these ones are not even close to the same size, so I will have to do a little more. Plus, I'm putting an extra stilt in there and an extra stilt in there. Okay, so found the middle of the wall, it's right here. I've decided that I'm just gonna put the stilt right in the middle. I was going to play with the two uh, run openings, but I've decided that that's not really gonna contribute to the overall design. Uh, it might actually take away from it. Instead, I'll just put it right in the middle of the structure, that'll be fine. I was holding off doing it right away, like when we did the rest of them, uh, just because I I figured I could do something with the design, but I've decided against it now. It would have been a lot easier had I done it, but that's okay. Uh, with four stilts, it is actually strong enough 
to hold all this up, but six, of course, it's gonna be stronger. I'm gonna do the same thing. Get some more broken sidewalk blocks and have it sit on there. We're not doing deck uh, blocks and we're not doing piles or sauna tubes or anything like that. This is gonna be fine. If it does settle, we can always just lift it up with a car jack or something and then put more structure underneath it do anything like that. This whole thing in theory would be able to be moved with uh, the right equipment. All the stilts are different heights so you'd have to compensate for that for wherever you put it down but it'll be fine. So just so you know the walls sit half on the stilts so the the load does travel down. Uh, maybe I can demonstrate this here real quick. Okay so if we have let's see here the wall the the Right here, we'll say that's that's the rim board, right? On end, bam. On top of that sits a wall. Let's say it's this big, on the flat. And then the, the stilt is about like this. Let's see if I can draw this. So, wall is from here to here. Joist rim board is here and then stilt is here. So that stilt is holding up this part of the wall and that is nice and strong. I'm not sure if that was very necessary to explain, but I just want to say like this is strong. It's gonna hold up. Uh, not that anyone has said anything against that. I just wanna, if, if anyone is gonna take this uh, design for their own coop, just keep that stuff in mind. I'm not an engineer, so I, d I don't, I don't, want to tell you this is how you do it this is just how i'm doing it for my birds i don't have the authority to tell you that this is how you should build it this is just how i'm building it all right gonna put in the rest of these stilts the rest of these bracing then i can get to the roof i forgot i actually had to do all this bracing and stilt stuff today uh so i'm a little behind it's okay we're already halfway through the day actually <laughs> Okay, braced, braced, front is braced. And for some reason it has like these little feet on this one. I'm not sure what that means. And then on the other side, of course, everything is braced. Also gonna add some GRKs, which are a structural screw that act as a leg bolt, but are actually quite a bit stronger, even though they're smaller. It's just the way that they're designed and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna put some in each post so that it just adds some more structural integrity. The nails are strong, but this is much stronger, and perhaps I should have done it uh, with this type of construction that I'm working with, where, where the, the stilt goes inside. Um, it's probably much better to put in some sort of leg bolt or, or a GRK like this. So I'm gonna put some of these in each post, and that'll just help with the structural integrity. Okay, first thing I need to do is figure out my pitch. So I don't know what my pitch is gonna be, but I want it to be a nice, tall, steep roof. Uh, I was hoping to have it like eight feet and eight feet on the other side. I'm not sure if that's going to be feasible. It might be a little more shallow than that, but uh, I'm going to have my gable that's going to be here and then the other gable that's going to be up there. They're going to hold that, that ridge block down, or I guess it would be a girder. Let's call it a girder. Uh, that's going to hold all the other pieces coming down. And I want those to be eight feet, I think. I was going to do a bird's mouth style rafter there. That's where you cut like a notch out, kind of like an L notch. And that sits onto the wall. But I think instead I will do a wedge block or something like that. And that should tie it together pretty nicely. And then I'm going to have uh, for heat and ventilation purposes, not heat purposes, but cooling purposes in the summer and stuff, I'm going to have uh, baffles in those rafters and stuff it should work out pretty good so I just got to figure out how I can do that I suck at math so we'll figure it out all right so drew a picture that I just immediately ignored and I was like no I need to look at this visually if it's not done for me on paper I can't really figure it out necessarily almost everything I build I just build on the fly this I just made this little mock-up so 
this is my pitch. I'm not sure what the pitch is. I'll have to check later with the speed square. But this is what it's going to be. Giant triangle. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, basically what I did is I just marked off where I needed to be. So right here, I drew a line compensating for the plywood and stuff. This represents the, the bottom uh, cord of the, of the gable. And then same thing on the other side and then at the top I figured out what that has to be. So I'll cut all those miters, put it together and then I'll slap some OSB on here. And then I will build the structure inside that's supposed to hold the girder piece or the, that ridge block piece. And then I will build the other one to twin it. And I highly doubt we'll be able to lift this up ourselves. So we may have to just uh, call it a day after this and hopefully we'll get some more people here right away so that we can put it out there. Even with kickers and stuff, like I don't wanna, I don't wanna risk it falling. Alright, just as I was about to mark out the vents, I don't know if you can hear that or see it, but it's freaking raining again. Uh, but this is the gable. Uh, that's without all the webs in it and stuff uh, just yet. Uh, I'm going to flip it over, put those in there, screw them through, and then screw them through the other. The reason why I'm using screws and not staples is because I don't have a staple gun. Uh, but we're going to call it quits because uh, it's pouring. So, yeah, very frustrating. But. Also, we're cutting down the razors. That's Ashley's mom, and Ashley was doing it too. Ashley went to go cover up the chickens, so yeah. Can't wait till it's done. I'll have to start working on it again tomorrow, or maybe it'll stop raining here right away, but it's raining pretty good. Hmm. Okay, it's the next day. We're gonna try to give it another shot. It's windy today, which is not ideal for gables, but we're at least going to build them. Got Dakota here, so he's gonna help me out, and my father-in-law is gonna come back again today as well. Hopefully we'll be able to get it up today. And then sheeting is kind of, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, hopefully we can though. So yesterday I wanted this to happen. Put the vent in and that way we have a full gable. Now I just have to build the structure on the other side. So I'm gonna flip this over. Chakota's gonna mimic this. He's gonna cut all the pieces and then we're gonna build two. Then we'll have two. Then we'll take our girder or a ridge block uh, to tie them together up on the roof and then we'll be able to do rafters.
Well, we are in the dark, so it's kind of hard to show the progress, but we've been working basically all day. Uh, it stopped for supper, uh, and I didn't, uh, I didn't really explain anything that I did, but tomorrow we should be further along. So we got all the rafters in, and uh, we have them all sort of, uh, well, rafter style. I was going to bird mouth them in. Um, but I didn't. I'm going to wedge block them tomorrow. I have it temporarily strapped and right here, that I know it's hard to see, but that is a brace so that everything holds together in case it was windy or gets windy. It was windy today, but pretty good progress. She could have went home. And so we decided to just quit. Ashley helped, my father-in-law helped. It was a decent day. Uh, tomorrow we will continue. All right, good morning. I'm gonna show you the progress that we made on the uh, chicken coop here. We have the inside, which is nothing progressing there. You can kind of see the makeshift scaffolding we made, but check out what we have so far. So we put up the rafters. Uh, these are just temporary strapping here. That was just to hold everything together and then we have some bracing and stuff. But check out the pitch on that roof. That is super steep. I'm not sure what the pitch actually is. Uh, I'll figure it out. Actually, why don't I show you how to do that? So it's actually kind of it's pretty simple. So you can do it a couple ways, but I'll show you. I'll show you this way because it's very easy. So you got you have your triangle, right? So the gable, that's called the gable there. This is a uh, what kind of triangle is that? If you remember your grade seven, uh, what is that? Geometry, trigonometry. Geometry. Trigonometry or geometry, I think. Uh, anyways, that is an isosceles triangle, right? I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, anyways, cut that in half from the peak down here. So this here is called your rise, and then this here is called your run. Uh, so from point to the middle is your run, and then from middle here to middle to the top is called your rise. So. Uh, what you want to do is you want to cut this in half and turn it into uh, What kind of triangle is that? Hypotenuse triangle or something like that uh, right angle triangle One of those anyways, you want to measure from here In 12 inches so along your run 12 inches and then measure from that 12 inch point up until you hit the hit the uh, rafter, and then you, that measurement, so 12, and then whatever this is. So uh, a steep roof is considered anything over 412, which is what, like, the garage is. The, gar the garage is 412. My house is a 412 or a 512. 512 is not steep. Uh, 612 is kind of steep. And then seven and up is, is getting pretty steep. Uh, 12 is, is really steep. Uh, lots of churches and buildings like that have 12, 12s or, or, or steeper. Uh, my chicken coop, I just wanted it to be super steep. Uh, let's figure out what it is. Okay, so up top here, I'm gonna show you how basically you can find your, your pitch. So you don't need to start at your top plate and measure up if there's stuff in the way or if it's weird. You can start from anywhere. If you have a level that uh, is at least 12 inches long, it'll work. So I'm gonna say start from here, right? And from there, I'm gonna find 12 inches and then I'm gonna measure up as straight as I can. To aid in that, I'm gonna use a quick square or speed square. Uh, that's what this is called. Uh, also can be called a tri square, but that is, uh, kind of a sticky subject with some people. Not sticky, it's debated on whether to call this a tri-square because calling this a tri-square would be T-R-I square, whereas a tri-square is this T-R-Y square. And uh, you can see why that could be confusing. Anyways, uh, we have uh, our run here, our pitch, or our, rise here we're going to find 
that with the aid of this, keeping the tape measure straight, and that'll give us our most, uh, well, not our most accurate, but a more accurate. Uh, if I had a f long framing square, that would work too. So, doing this by yourself is uh, not as easy as doing it with someone else, but it can be done. So, first thing you want to do is make sure that you're that you know that your your level is still level. Second thing you want to do is you want to mark where 12 inches is on your level that on the on the side that's going to touch the wall. And just to make it easier, I'm going to set mine on top of this uh, piece of gang here. And I'm going to find level, which is right right there. Now this is this roof is very steep. It's much steeper than like a, a house normally is, which usually 1212 is what your what your max is. No, no, I shouldn't say usually, but often times a steep roof to the layperson would be like a 1212. This is way steeper, as you can probably already see. So on your square, I put my square there just to make it easier to make me go straight or what I think is straight. It's just basically, this is a rough guess since I'm doing it so awkwardly, but this is a 23-12 pitch, which is uh, both awesome and ridiculous. Uh, so, today I'm going to strap everything. I'm strapping on the outside of my rafters here. Uh, the, uh, the purpose of that is uh, so that I don't have to put H-clips on my uh, OSB that's gonna go uh, uh, serve as my 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 roof deck sheathing. So basically an H clip is this little clip that goes that ties them both together. It, it like I don't know how to explain it but it, it just holds the two pieces of OSB and so that way if you step between the trusses or rafters in this case you don't bend them too much and uh, there's probably other reasons for that as well. I don't actually know if there's other reasons, maybe for a little bit of spacing, I don't know. Uh, in case you get swell, but you don't really want water in there, so I don't know. Uh, I do know that it's it's to help for structural so you can walk on it and whatnot. Uh, so I'm gonna be putting strapping on. It also ties everything together. With rafters, rafters are a little different than trusses, and by a little different, I mean they're completely different. Trusses uh, push on each other and they have, uh, they, their structure depends on itself, uh, whereas rafters depend on each other to stay up, sort of. That's not a very good way of explaining it. I don't know, I'm not an engineer, so, so I don't know all the terminology and all that stuff, and I don't know how to explain it that well. All I know is I know that this is how I'm gonna do it. I didn't explain any of this yesterday. So you can see that I have a piece of OSB here, OSB there, OSB there. And OSB there. Now I don't have any gang plates on this gable here, so this is acting as a piece of gang. Uh, that's basically a piece of gang. That's a piece of gang. That's a piece of gang. So it's glued and screwed, as they say. And on top of that, or sandwiching that, is going to be another two by four running across, which is going to make it the same size or like uh, width as the top plate and that way I can just travel my cladding all the way up to the peak from the floor and it can all look uniform. Then over here on our rafters we're going to put wedge blocks which is going to extend the wall just a little bit higher into there. Doing this job is making me wish that I had a framing stapler so that it would go way faster and way easier but I'm hand bombing all of my little nails into the strapping and stuff. These strappings are gonna come off, except for the bottom one. The bottom one is actually functional. These other ones, they're just kind of put in there just to hold it together, because uh, we stopped for the night. And uh, yeah, that's basically it, I think. I didn't explain anything yesterday because I just wanted to get as much done as possible, but now I'm here by myself. I can't really do much by myself. Uh, I'm going to be doing some wedge blocks now waiting for uh, Dakota and my father-in-law to come back. They both offered to come back again, which is awesome because I can't shoot this by myself. But luckily today, there's no wind, so it should be much easier to shoot. And this is stupidly steep, so it'll be hard to shoot 
uh, like this. Okay, so how do you make your wedge blocks? Super easy actually. So all you need is a scrap piece of anything basically, two by four in this case because the top plate is a two by four. You're gonna take a square and just make sure that it was cut square, which this one was, so that's good. You're gonna take your block, you're gonna put it on your top plate against your rafter in this case. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you'd only do this with rafters, not necessarily with trusses or anything like that. Then you're gonna take your handy dandy pencil and you're going to draw the line. I gotta be careful because I'm not holding it against anything. And then I want to, because I'm doing it a different way, I'm gonna draw a line on the other side. Draw a line on the other side like this. And that is so. I can laminate. So I'm gonna have one here, and one here, and one there. So, what do I have? Okay, perfect. So this is gonna be two, right? So I'm gonna have two that are this size, and I'm gonna have one that is this size. So it's gonna be a big, small, big, and then it's gonna fit this, and then I'm gonna gang it all together. I'm gonna to laminate it all together. I'm gonna to glue this and then nail it to that. I hope that makes sense. And I'm gonna do one for each one on both sides. All right, I just went and put on a pencil holder because I thought I was gonna to have to cut every individual piece with uh, the miter, or not the miter saw, the circular saw. Or skill saw, if you will. I got a hawk. It's probably after the chickens. Oh, there's a crow going after him. No, it's two hawks. Okay, that's not good. Good thing I'm gonna have this bitchin' chicken coop. Anyways, what was I saying? Hey, I'm gonna take the circular saw. Oh yeah, I was saying, uh, it's funny how skill saw, it's called a skill saw, when skill is one of the most horrible tool brands ever made. Maybe it used to be good back in the day like Black & Decker used to be. I don't know. Anyways, I do not have to use that. I thought I was gonna have to because my miter saw, even at its most acute angle, it wasn't steep enough to cut the angles that I needed. So I came up with this uh, sophisticated persuasion of instrumental genius. Basically, it is a block, or a stop block, holding my raw stock, and then a, I guess this would be a wedge block holding what is gonna become my wedge block. So this is holding it so that this angle, the angle of this and the angle of this work together so that when I bring it down, it'll cut on my line. Here and here creates here. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut 24 of these long ones and then I'm gonna cut 12 of these smaller ones. Uh, I'll have to, you know, re redo the jig to cut the smaller ones, but yeah. Gold star. Okay, then after you have them all cut, you got something that looks like this and you are good to go. So that should just slide right in and then you nail it together and you got way more stability and you have risers for your cladding that goes on the inside. We're not sure what we're gonna do exactly in there just yet, but yeah. So I just gotta make uh, 23 more of these. Wait, how many? 11 more of these. There was 24 of the risers. All right, cool. Another gold star. And there we go. They are all done. Okay, now that I finished that, I gotta put, oh, I almost dropped you. I have to, <laughs> I have to put the strapping on. Now, on this side, I had already started doing it how I wanted to do it. These ones are proper, those ones are temporary.
that's what we have. I mean, unfortunately, we didn't get further, but that's because we were getting frustrated with uh, doing this fascia board. Uh, we could we could put it up no problem sort of thing, but I measured wrong a couple times, and we couldn't get our angles on the two peaks to uh, match up. So they're a slightly askew, but eh, we decided that's fine. Uh, normally we would take we would take it off and we would do it again, but we don't have any more material left to do that. So we got two by six facial here, two by eight facial here. I'm just going to do something with the aesthetic, or I am going to do something with the aesthetic. I just like it. Different. I don't want to put a pork chop or anything here. Uh, so it just just this pitch, it makes this as long as the two by eight there. So it looks it looks better, I think. So uh, we're not sure exactly what kind of cladding we're gonna put on there, but it will look good. But next is sheeting. Check it out. My mother-in-law and Ashley did all the raspberries. So next year. When they're going back, we can decide where we want them. I want to put a path in here. You might, you might know this about me by now. I like paths and stuff, so I'm gonna have a little path. And I would love to have way more raspberries. Wouldn't it be cool to have a raspberry maze? Okay, next day. So first thing, I'm gonna cut these uh, pieces of fascia shy by about three eighths, so that I can cap them with OSB slathered in uh, PL premium and the reason why I'm doing that is this is just my attempt which I'm not sure if it'll work I just know that if you cap the end grain you will stop like the checking they call it which is basically just the cracks that go get in your end grain uh, it's not that necessary I'm just kind of experimenting but I'm gonna do that so I'm gonna cut them back three eighths uh, this one and this one, I already set them back 3 eighths, so that's fine, but the the back two, I have to cut back at 3 eighths. Normally you have, well not normally, but sometimes you will have uh, your your fascia boards run wild and then you'll cut them off where you want them to be. I just cut them to size, uh, to the actual uh, length, but then I decided why not make it easier on myself, because I had thought of this later, the, the ceiling thing, why don't I just set two of them to where I would need them to be and then I'll only have to cut off two instead of four. Uh, although I could have just done it all at one time had I just dropped it and then cut it and then brought it back up. Doesn't matter, this is how I'm gonna do it. This is much easier to do it this way anyways because then you don't accidentally cut it too short or whatever. So that's what I'm gonna do now, cap those and then I'm going to sheet the roof. It's a little windy today so I might not be able to do it. We'll see. Okay. So, we scribe our line, then I can cut it. Okay, then you go like this, you put it on the peanut butter sandwich, splooge it around a little bit, get it all over there, put it in place. Shouldn't use this, put your hand on this stuff, but yeah, there we go. There, should be sealed, I guess. That's the theory anyways. I'm not sure if it's gonna work exactly, but eh, we'll see, we'll see. Well, time to sheet. Dakota's on his way here, I think, at some point, but I can get started myself.
done. Oh, that's uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I am so glad Dakota came and helped me out because that is one steep roof. I have never sheeted a roof that steep before. And that was, ah, I shouldn't say it was frustrating. It was just, it was just a little difficult. Um, but we got it figured, we got it on. Uh, doing it with the strapping method was a lot easier. I should say though, if you're going to use the strapping method, actually, if you're gonna do anything that I say, you know, you gotta, you gotta realize that I'm still learning. I am a little rusty. Uh, so anything that you see me say, maybe consult someone else before you go, you know, building stuff. Little disclaimer there. Because uh, today I had a guy comment on the part one of this video. Uh, I'm sure if he would have seen part two, maybe he wouldn't have commented in the part one. But just the way we did the stilts, uh, uh, he said that we should have probably put the the posts under a ledger, like a beam sort of thing. And I agree that that is a, that is a good method, probably a better method, but this works. And since we got the GRKs in there, they're super strong, it should work. So we got a lot of nails in there and we got some GRKs in there, so should be good. But basically, I just wanna say that if you're watching me, do not take these as tutorials or instructional or how-tos necessarily. It's supposed to be mostly just entertainment and if I can teach one or two things, I'm not a teacher, but if I can teach a, a couple things, then, you know, good. If I don't teach anything and you just like watching the videos, good. Uh, yeah, that's what I wanna say. But ahead of that, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. It looks it looks pretty good. I, I think, I think, that if I were to do this again, I would be a little more careful in building these freaking gables though, because like I've never built a gable before, but if I were to, I would be a lot more careful, a little more careful, because here I made it a little too wide and what happens? This. Since it's a little too wide, the sheet pops up a little bit and it does it on the other side as well a little bit, but it doesn't do it on the other uh, end. So that gable is fine. It's just this one that's not good. But what's next is doing the shingles, soffit, fascia, siding, the stuff inside here. In fact, I can take these braces off now. I'm hoping that the play in those other materials will help me uh, hide that stupid mistake. I'm very frustrated. I wish that I, I had that one in the back so it wouldn't be as obvious, but it is what it is and I'll have to live with it. Like I said, I'm still learning and I'm a little rusty. So yeah, let me show you what I have planned for ventilation. So one, I got this window, it opens. It's a small window, but it's a window nonetheless. And then up here, now this is really tall. Uh, when I started building this, I didn't know I was gonna make it this tall. I just kind of went as I went. But I got some ventilation here and I got some ventilation there. And then I got the ridge ventilation. Apparently chickens need a lot of ventilation. And I guess that makes sense because they must give off a lot of moisture because they crap a lot. And apparently they give off a lot of body heat and uh, that's how they stay warm together. I don't, I don't know. I, I'm getting differing, uh, I don't know if they're opinions, but a lot of people are saying one thing, some other people are saying other things. It's kind of contradictory, but we'll see what works for us. Uh, we're still learning how to do this, and uh, we're not gonna pretend that we know everything. I mean, I don't pretend I know everything. I, yeah, I uh, am eager to learn. If someone else knows more than me, and like if someone comments about, you know, whatever, you know, such as the guy who commented about the stilts, um, those people are assets to me because that way I learn. Uh, I think that it's better to uh, be right by actually being right rather than having your way versus someone having it their way. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? <laughs> Oh yeah, so the ventilation thing. I'm thinking that I may have to put more ventilation further down. I don't know. It might be a little difficult to heat this place because it's, it's pretty freaking tall. So I may actually end up this temporary floor here. I may actually make a floor up here. 
and then I'll have to put ventilation further down uh, to, so that, you know because it'll be blocked off sort of thing um, I am going to be putting a wall heater which is going to act uh, twofold basically it's going to block off or partition the front from the main coop so that's where the uh, hospital whatever coop you would call it whatever you would call it hospital coop or whatever I said that very weirdly. Uh, so it's gonna partition off that, so it's gonna go always to top, but also it's gonna add a little more stability. These are 24 centers, and uh, that should be fine uh, for this sort of system. But putting just in a couple more there, that's actually gonna be four more, but they're gonna be sandwiched together. That uh, adds a little more structure to it, and uh, more structure is good. Uh, yeah. So next, obviously I gotta insulate and all that stuff, gonna have baffles and all sorts of things. Uh, but for now, I'm taking the rest of the day off because I'm kinda tired. I'm gonna go hang out with my queen and we're going to, I don't know, maybe we'll go see a movie or something, I'm not sure. I haven't been to a movie in a long time. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Stay tuned for part three. That is coming out. Uh, I don't know when it's coming out. Sometime. <laughs> uh, yeah. Peace. Yeah, I'm really gonna pretend that I'm gonna leave my phone here. I was trying to be artistic, you know? Like uh, those shows where they like walk off in the distance away from the camera and then uh, have to walk all the way back. Like, uh, what's that guy, Survivor Man? He like walks so far that has to walk all the way back to get the camera just to get that one beauty shot. <laughs> all right, peace.